Hi, I'm Luna. I study CS at Brown. Hi, I'm Umbika. I study CS and modern culture and media at Brown. And today we are going to be talking about Git and GitHub. So this video is basically to help you understand why we even use Git and the basics of using Git commands. Yeah, so first, Ambika, what is Git? Yeah, sure. So Git is a version control system that's designed to handle all kinds of projects of different sizes with speed and efficiency. So specifically, version control systems are it's basically a software tool that helps you keep track of different versions and modifications done to your code. And it's essentially a way for you to have access to your code, um, to any version of your code. Yeah, so I guess one other thing is that Git and GitHub are not the same thing. This can sometimes be a misconception. Um, so I'm gonna just explain what Git is. Um, GitHub is a cloud-based hosting system that lets you actually manage your Git repositories. So GitHub isn't the actual version control system. Um, and GitHub also isn't the only kind of cloud-based hosting okay. service that manages repositories and uses Git. There's also other alternatives like GitLab, Bitbucket, Fabricator, um, and they, these all use Git also. Yeah, so GitHub specifically um, is super useful for collaboration and also individual projects. So when it comes to large collaborative projects, it's really great because you can have one master source of code with a lot of different contributors um, with all the different people branching off and editing the code base in their own way. And for individual projects, it's also great because then you can roll back to different versions of your code. So if you make a mistake, it's not that big of a deal. You can just go back to a previous working version of your code. All right, so now we're gonna go through kind of the first step of the process, which is actually creating a GitHub repository. So to do that, we have to go to github.com, select new repo, which is that green button, um, and then fill in the create repo page. So essentially here, you just give your repository a name, um, you update its privacy settings, so you can set it to either public or private, and you add a few key things, which is the readme file and the git ignore files. So readme files on GitHub are really cool because you can write in the markdown and it'll automatically render your readme at the bottom of the page. Um, and for git ignore files, you often want to ignore large files like packages, um, logs, or automatically generated files. So you, if you put them in your git ignore file, they won't be pushed to your GitHub at any point. Um, this is also super important if you have things that require privacy. So if you have API keys or passwords or anything else that requires something, um, an extra level of security, that's great to put in your Git ignore file so they won't at ever any point um, be available to the public on GitHub. Also, GitHub has a lot of templates, so you can just select the language you're working on and it'll also and it'll fill in the Git ignore file for you. So there's your repository now. Um, okay, so now that you have your repository set up on GitHub, we're gonna go through the Git commands that'll allow you to get the files on your local machine. So if you haven't already set up Git, just pause the video here and we put a link in the description where you can visit the Git website and set up Git for yourself. Um, it has a bunch of instructions that you can just follow on the web page. So now we're going to go through the basic workflow of using Git. So to get the files from GitHub that we just created um, onto your local machine, you need to clone the plot project repository. Um, and to do that, you use this Git command called git clone. So Luna is going to show you how to do that, git clone. And then to get the link to your GitHub repository, you press this green download code button, you copy that link and then just paste it at the end of your command in the terminal. And you can see that it's cloning the repository. And if you look into your directory, you can now see the first project file in your in the directory that you ran the command in. So now what we're going to do is edit our readme file and see how we can um, push that back to our GitHub um, repository. So what Luna is going to do is open up the readme file and make a couple edits. Um, yeah, just making a couple list items. 
So yeah, after you edit the readme file, you can use git status to see what files have been modified. So you can see in red, it says modified readme. Um, just about git status, you don't always have to use git status in order to um, add and commit files to git but it can be un uh, helpful in understanding where in the adding and committing process you are. So right now we just see that a file has been modified. We still haven't added or committed this file yet. Um, so to add this file, all you have to do is git add dot, or if you want to add a specific file, you have to say git add and then write the file name. Cool, and then once you do git add, um, you'll see that if you do git status again, then now you'll see that it's green, that file that you just modified, um, which shows that it's actually ready to be committed. So it's, this is the staging area. Um, so before you saw that this is not staged for commit, um, whereas now these are gonna be committed. Um, so you wanna make sure that anytime you want a change to actually be committed, they should be in green before you're doing commit. So now, that you've added, um, you can use git commit, which is another command. Um, and you can use the flag M, which will let you add a message. Um, so let's say this is just an edit to a readme file. So we'll say that. Um, and then now that we've committed, we can do git status again, and we'll see that all our changes um, have been committed. So they don't show up in this area anymore. And another useful command you can use is git log, um, which will actually show you kind of a log of all your commits that you've done so far. So this is useful for if you ever wanna like roll back to a previous commit um, that kind of thing. So it's kind of your timeline of all your changes and that kind of thing. Um, so right now you can tell that our branch, um, the remote branch, which is the one that we saw in the browser is still at origin main. Um, so it's here, whereas our local branch is here. So now once we've committed locally, we need to make sure to push these changes to the um, cloud-based hosting service, which is GitHub. So we need to use git push. Um, so we, once we do git push, it'll push that to the remote branch. And now if we do git log, um, we'll see that all the changes are at kind of in the same place. So this commit has been pushed everywhere. And if we go back to the browser, you'll also see, we reload. Um, you'll see that our changes are there now with our readme. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, so just to recap what we've done, um, we went through three main stages of Git. Um, the first stage is when you modified the file. So you saw when we made a list within the readme file, but didn't add or commit, that's when we've modified the file. Um, you haven't added it to your local database yet. The second stage is the staged um, stage of the process. So you, by saying git add dot or git add file name, you've marked a file as ready to go into your next commit. Um, and the third and final stage is committing. So the committed stage, which means your modified file has been stored in your local database um, of your commit snapshots. And then we also went through a fourth um, action, which is pushing to your um, GitHub or cloud-based storage system. So those are the three main stages of Git that you just saw. Yeah, so that's kind of a basic workflow. Um, we did mention before that Git is super useful for collaboration. Um, and if you're collaborating, something you'll have to learn about is branching. Um, and kind of pulling also. So git pull is another useful command. We're not gonna go over it today, but we will do um, a video in the future. So that'll be coming soon with more of an explanation about why um, and how you should use branches and that kind of thing. So kind of useful collaboration techniques. Um, and another point, I think git can be really specific for each use case. Um, so I'd say, always do a quick Google search if you have a specific thing um, you're looking to do. There's lots of kind of stack overflow answers. Um, that's what I do personally, whenever I'm using Git, I never really remember the commands I actually have to use. Um, so that's always Google's your best friend for that. Yeah, so those were the first few steps of using Git. 
We hope this video is useful and that you like and subscribe because we post videos every Monday. Yeah, and make sure to comment also if you have any questions at all, we'll always make sure to answer. Um, so thanks for watching. See you guys soon. Thanks.